Um, excessive sugar intake can actually cause an increased heart rate. Uh, sugar, again, inhibits our ability to cope with stress. At the same time, it increases oxidative stress, which can magnify anxiety symptoms. Not only does the actual effect of the intake of sugar do this, but the resulting crash can increase this as well. So you'll notice it on both ends. Sugar is at the root of chronic inflammation, which impacts every system in the body. Um, inflammation has been implicated in things such as depression, and studies have shown that countries such as the U.S., that have a high overall level of sugar consumption also have higher rates of anxiety and depression. I could go on forever about all the ways that sugar can affect just the brain and the nervous system, but let's move on. Let's go back to this image of our digestive system. We've already talked about how sugar affects the liver and pancreas, both of which are a part of our digestive system, and how the effects on the liver can cause turmoil in just about every system of our bodies. Because of the sheer number of jobs our liver is responsible for. So the digestive system. Throughout our digestive system, as well as on the skin and, and the vagina of women, there lives a yeast called candida. Many of you have probably heard of it. Now, most of us know that we all have bacteria, both good and bad, that live all throughout our bodies. Our health depends on a good balance between these. We don't want no bad bacteria. We just want a good balance between the two of them. Now, candida, like other yeast, feed off sugar. Immune system. These are all components in our body that are directly responsible for performing jobs directly related to our immune system. Especially important for those who may have at some point in their lives parted with their tonsils, adenoids, spleen, and or appendix, as your immune system will already be compromised if you are missing um, if you're missing any of these. However, as we saw before when we were discussing the brain, sugar is known to cause inflammation, which also affects the immune system by many of the same mechanisms. Also, as we saw before, sugar depletes vitamin D, which is an important vitamin for a healthy immune system. This is one reason why we often get sick more often in the winter when the days are shorter and the little sun we do get is far less direct. Almost, it knocks out white blood cells almost literally. Sugar has the ability to put your white blood cells, particularly neutrophils, into a sort of temporary coma. This effect begins about 30 minutes after you consume the sweet treat and lasts for up to five hours after. Now imagine that you're sneaking small amounts of sweets throughout the day. Your immune system would be seriously compromised all the time. Interestingly enough, the 1973 study that showed this also showed that fasting increases the ability of our white blood cells to fight bad bacteria. This gives us an interesting look into the benefits of intermittent fasting. And this does all cycle back also to the nervous system, because while you're indulging in those tasty treats, your white blood cells are asleep at the wheel. You're triggering a boost in stress hormones, your body's coping with excess insulin while also suffering a depletion of healthy glucose levels. It's just becoming a mess now. <laughs> and finally, cancer cells love sugar. This 2012 study I have listed up here shows that cancer actually feeds off of glucose. When they're deprived of glucose, they actually have a better chance of dying than with treatment alone. So, how much sugar is safe? Well, the short answer is that sugar has absolutely no nutritional value. Our bodies simply don't need it to survive. That being said, the American Heart Association recommends that we consume a top limit of six teaspoons of added sugar per day. The upper limit for men and children varies slightly, but like I said, the bottom line is that the less, the better. Our labels aren't really helpful with that, so what does that mean exactly? Each teaspoon of sugar is about 4 grams, 4.2 actually. So that calculates to be no more than 25 grams of sugar per person per day. How many grams of sugar do you think the average American consumes in a day? I'm just going to let you think about that for a minute before I switch to the next slide. You ready? Ready? 
25 teaspoons per day. That's 96 grams. Now that's an average. Historically, Americans